Welcome to church. 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 Welcome to church this morning. Welcome to our live stream from Willsborough Baptist Church, uh, coming to you from our living room to your living room. And um, we're really glad that you've been able to connect with us this morning. Um, we'd love it even more if you want to connect with us uh, via our text number at any point, um, then you can text in. It's just in the top corner of the screen. It'll be there throughout the service. And um, we especially want to encourage you today, if you feel you've got an encouragement for your church family, um, for, for the church that you want it to be read out, um, think about that. We're going to have a bit of worship. There's going to be a couple of songs, then we're going to be reading some of those encouragements. So now's the time. Um, pray to God and maybe give a reason that you want to praise God this week. Um, but, you know, if you feel God's laying anything on your heart for your church family today, then please do message it in. And we'd love to, we'd love to share that and for you to be a part of the service actively in that way. Um, we also want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's come to The Well, the new community cafe that's been held in our car park. Um, as we can't meet together physically at this time still because the restrictions are, are um, they're, they're just slightly too many and too numerous and too complicated currently for us to be able to all gather together. But um, we've got this space where we can connect and have a coffee and share and connect with our community. And we've had a great couple of mornings on Thursday and Saturday. Um, we're also um, going to be um, opening that this Tuesday morning, this Thursday morning and this Saturday. So hopefully one of those is going to be a time when you can come along and, um, and just enjoy some fellowship time with us and we're hoping the sun's going to be shining. Weather forecast looks really good so keep praying for the weather. We also want to say congratulations to uh, Sue and David Milborough today on their 40th wedding anniversary, which is absolutely awesome. Um, so congratulations. They just wanted to um, celebrate that together with us and, uh, and they want to give thanks to God for his faithfulness over those 40 years. And, and we celebrate with you and pray God's blessing on your anniversary and on the next 40 years as well. So, um, so pray a blessing on you today. Um, but... Right off at the start, we wanted to bring a bit of a testimony, a bit of a word of encouragement from Anne, um, a dearly loved member of the church. Many will know her well. She wanted to share this um, with us this morning. So um, let's go over to Anne. I would like to share with all of you and to show how you can be encouraged by a few words, perhaps, occasionally from me. Um, I would like to share with you how wonderful the Lord's been to me in this lockdown and I've not minded whatsoever and it's amazing how he provides for me so unexpectedly um, like when the other day Jean Keddy arrived and uh, spoke to me outside where I'm standing now and she brought me four pints of milk and that's just what I needed because I've got my gardeners coming, my grandson coming and now reflooring my summer house and it was just what I needed for all the cups of tea and coffees and things like that and I feel truly blessed. I'd ask the Lord what shall I do and he provides every see you, a lot of you, on, the, um, on my television because I had a DVD of the service and I see you all doing the welcome which I've been in as well but how wonderful to see all of you and I wish all of you a happy time together when we ever we meet and I encourage you to enjoy this time the Lord is with us always and I love it when we have communion, um, albeit um, not exactly together, but I feel together, uh, especially because I see it on the big screen. I'm very fortunate and I feel part of Mark and Izzy's home and the wonderful words that Mark says and I thank him and all of you for your best wishes that I get. I'm thankful and I'm humbled by it. Amen. 
Nope. Well, we have the prayer team there waving at us for some reason, um, but we'll, we'll see more from them later at the end. But what a wonderful reason to praise um, God this morning. And as we said at the beginning, if you've got more things you want to praise God for, just let us know uh, via the text number. Um, also, Robert's messaged in to say this week's Lighthouse Online is available now. And they're going to be looking at the prodigal son, um, which is really interesting because we're going to give a brief mention to that later on in the sermon too. Um, they've got a game, a Bible story, crafts, amazing worship. So you can find the playlist. If you go to our playlist, you'll be able to see that Lighthouse Online episode 19, I think it's uh, where we're at now. Um, it's been a, a long period, hasn't it, in, in kind of lockdown and coming out of lockdown. So um, do connect on there. It's great for any kids up to the age of about 11 and you can watch that anytime. So later on, you could watch it with your kids, do the activities together as a family. Um, that'd be brilliant. And thank you so much to the team for putting that together. But as we said, if you've got an encouragement for the church this morning, something you want to praise God for, text into the number and we're also uh, really pleased this morning that we've got um, uh, with us in the room we've got our uh, um, we've got the wonderful Christine and she's going to be playing clarinet so she's just outside here um, now and um, and also um, we have Shona and Barry who are here and they're going to be um, leading us in worship Shona's going to be leading us uh, so um, so over to you Shona yeah good morning everyone um, I just want to share a passage from Psalm 150 50, that says, Hallelujah, praise God in his holy house of worship. Praise him under the open skies. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his magnificent greatness. Praise him with a blast on the trumpet. Praise him by strumming soft strings. Praise him with castnets and dance. Praise him with banjo and flute. Praise him with, with cymbals and a big bass drum. Praise him with fiddles and a mandolin. Let every living, breathing creature praise God. Hallelujah. I think that is an incredible um, verse there. It's, uh, verses there. It's, it's awesome that we can praise and such an almighty God together. And we're going to spend some time now praising him. And as Mark has said, text in anything that you've got that you can praise God for. Because he is incredible and he is mighty. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I found in the desert place, though I walk.
is devoted Like a ring of solid gold Like a vow that is tested Like a covenant of old Your love is enduring Through the winter rain Beyond the horizon With mercy for to be praised With angels and saints who we sing Worthy are you, Lord And it's why I sing your praise Will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips dear lord and heavenly father i thank you so much for your grace and love that you've poured down on us I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, Lord. And I thank you even more that we know he rose again and we serve the risen Saviour. I thank you for our church family in Willsborough. And I especially thank you for the well starting this week, Lord. I pray that it will become this beacon of light in the middle of Willsborough. I pray that everyone who comes through their lives will be touched and transformed by your love. And I pray that they will come to know you as their personal saviour. I pray for each and every one of us volunteering there, God. I pray that you would really help us just to ooze your love into everyone who walks through. And Lord, I pray for anyone who's been affected by COVID-19. I pray that for those who've been affected physically, I pray for healing, God. I pray for those ones who are discouraged spiritually or mentally, God. I pray that you would bring people into their lives to build them up. And I pray, Lord, for our whole community in Willsboro, for those who don't know you yet, Lord, I pray that you would touch their hearts. And I pray, Lord, that they would come to find you, Lord, and seek you out. I ask this all in your name. Amen. Amen. And there are so many reasons to praise God that have been flooding in. Sorry if you lost us just for a bit in the last song. Um, you hopefully have us back now. In fact, if you're hearing this, you definitely have us back. But this, um, we got this message in saying, I'm so thankful. Jesus is a light that absolutely no shadow can ever deny. In every storm, every season, his light, love and favour surround us and ensure that we are never overwhelmed. We walk through fire but are not burnt. We walk through the waters but are not overcome. I praise the holy name of Jesus because he lifts me from where I am to where his grace places me. A bit of Isaiah 43 there um, for us mixed into that. And, um, and someone else has said, this week my non-believing ex came round and was telling me about his neighbour who was baptised the other day. And he was saying how he's totally turned his life around and said how they'd had long chats and how this guy was telling them about what God's done in his life. And then he said that there's another neighbour who's been in a similar situation who's also wanting to be baptised. And, um, and you could just see this openness um, in, these, in, in her ex as people have been witnessing of God's transformation of lives right in front of his eyes and the life-changing power of baptism. And again and again, we're hearing stories like this, aren't we, of God transforming lives and touching people, um, even at this time, especially at this time. Um, amazing testimonies coming through and what a witness. And we just pray. Um, we pray for your ex, whoever, whoever takes that in, we pray that he will come to know the Lord and accept him as his saviour. Um, uh, we had this text in from Tim and Sonia saying, thank you, Lord, um, that the families at Stepping Stones had a great time together yesterday. That's our contact center. And they said, and thank you for the well for providing us with coffees. Um, yeah, and, and actually, if you're able to volunteer for the contact center and Stepping Stones, do get in touch with Tim and Sonia. It's amazing uh, ministry. 
And the prayer team have messaged us as well. And they said they were led to Isaiah 40. There's going to be lots of Isaiah today. We had a bit of Isaiah 43. Now a bit of Isaiah 40. We're going to have more from Isaiah later. But it says, um, for those who are weary um, and anyone else who wants to soar like an eagle, you know, and those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will, be, they will soar on wings like eagles. So, um, you know, if that's you this morning... And the prayer team are going to be available later via the Zoom link that will be in the chat. And you can go and you can connect in there from the end of the sermon and they'll pray for you if you're feeling weary at this time. Um, and, um, and just one more. Uh, it says, just as Dave and Sue are celebrating their Ruby wedding anniversary and thanking God for 40 years, I would also like to thank the Lord as Phil and I celebrated our Pearl anniversary 30 years last Tuesday. Through many ups and downs, we're still together due to God's faithfulness, patience and everlasting love. Jill, isn't that, isn't that wonderful? Thank you so much, Jill. Um, you know, God's faithfulness in our lives, his patience with us through every um, storm and every uh, joyful season and, and whatever's going on, he is there with us. And so we, um, we praise him this morning. And someone else there just saying such a blessing to see everyone at the well yesterday, a treasured time. If you message us, sometimes it's, it's a bit of a delay. So we'll read more of these later on as well as they um, come pouring in. Um, but we want to play you a poem now. Um, which, um, which Terry has shared with us this morning. And it might be really pertinent uh, if you're feeling, you know, we know some people are feeling at this time, like what, what, is God's, what is God's plan for my life? You know, how can I connect? How can I be used by God? Um, and of course, the reminder in Ephesians 2.10 is, well, actually you are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus uh, for good works, which he has planned in advance for you to do. And this um, this poem really um, talks about you being a masterpiece of God. So uh, let's go to the poem. It was battered and scarred and the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth the while to waste much time on the old violin but he held it up with a smile. What am I bid for the old violin? Who'll start the bidding for me? A pound, a pound, who'll make it two? Two pound, who'll make it three? Three pound once, three pound twice, going for three. But no, from the back of the room, a gray haired man came forward and took up the bow. And wiping the dust, from the old violin and tightening up all its strings he played a melody pure and sweet as sweet as the angel sings the music ceased and the auctioneer in words that were calm and low said now what am I bid for the old violin and he held it up with the bow a hundred pounds, who'll make it two? Two hundred, who'll make it three? Three hundred once, three hundred twice, going and gone, said he. The crowd, it cheered, but some of them said, we, we just don't understand. What changed the worth of the old violin? Why, the touch of the master's hand. Many a man with life out of tune and battered and scarred by sin is auctioned cheap by a thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin. But the master comes and that thoughtless crowd can never quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. Yeah, we were just reminded by that. Just one touch from Jesus 
changes absolutely everything in our lives, doesn't it? And, um, you know, when we place our lives in his hands, there's no limit to what he can do with us and the beautiful thing he can create um, from us. So, um, so again, this morning, if God's speaking to you, if you know his spirit's moving in your life, maybe you're connecting in for the first time and you just want to know Jesus better, um, then we, we encourage you, call out to him this morning. Um, there's going to be opportunities for that. There's going to be opportunities again with the prayer team later. Um, but now we're going to come into, our, um, our time of looking at God's Word together. Um, we're looking today at Isaiah chapter 61. So it's time to grab a Bible and get ready. And we've got a very special reading for you this morning. Um, so um, without further ado, we'll go to that and, um, and we'll be picking it up in just a moment. But I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the soil makes the spark come up and a garden causes seeds to grow so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise. Spring up before all nations. Okay, so um, um, we're reaching the end of our um, three-part series on Isaiah 61 um, today. And, um, you know, on the first week, we looked at this manifesto of the kingdom of God, these verses that were declared by Jesus in the synagogue in Nazareth. And they tell us about God's rescue plan for the whole world. They tell us about God's plan and his desire for our lives too. And... um, You know, that ministry that is carried out on through the church today, which sees good news proclaimed to the poor, which sees people released and set free, rescued out of darkness, um, which sees broken hearts healed and blind eyes opened and the favour of God bestowed on humanity once more. Um, We heard last week from Freddie as he preached to us about what it means to walk in God's favour. Uh, rebuilding, seeing God's restoring and renewing power at work in our lives and in the world today. And, um, and today we are looking at the harvest in our own lives and in the world that can result from that. Um, you know, we heard that wonderful reading read by um, the children there. You know, I think if you've... Um, you're going to need a Bible in front of you today um, because I think if you're like me, you're probably just so bowled over by the way it was read that you might have missed some of the content of the verses. Um, but it was wonderful, really powerful reading. But um, Isaiah starts our passage today and he, he's speaking about justice. And we've looked a lot at justice and the prophets in the Old Testament, they spoke about justice time and time again because it's, it's on God's heart. Uh, But it's really interesting. He starts with the word for, okay, the word for in verse eight. So it says, for I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. But why for? You know, so what is this following on from? For implies um, that what's been spoken of here is a natural consequence of what has just been said. You know, so um, last week's passage ended with verse seven which is this wonderful uh, verse about receiving a a double portion. And it says this, it says, Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, uh, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in the land and everlasting joy will be yours. What an amazing promise. You know, this is... 
This is about grace, isn't it, in verse 7? You know, it's about God's people receiving what they don't deserve, more than they could ever even dream of. The, the double portion of the inheritance, it, it was reserved for the firstborn son in Jewish culture at the time. So you can read about that in the, in the Old Testament law. But really, this inheritance which Isaiah is writing of belongs to Jesus. He is, he's the firstborn son, isn't he? He's God's firstborn. He's God's one and only son. But actually, he's become the firstborn among many brothers and sisters because of what he's done for us. The inheritance belongs to Jesus. Um, but amazingly, amazingly, astonishingly, Jesus shares his reward with us. We become co-heirs with Christ. God is ultimately, Isaiah is saying, going to bless his people through this Messiah, this anointed one, this king who is coming. And people are going to receive a double portion. Freddie mentioned Job last week. Uh, Job went through intense trials and he lost everything. But ultimately, in the end, he received a double portion. He received way more than he ever had before. And do you know what? The journey's tough. You know, the journey for the people of Israel had been really tough. They'd lost everything, absolutely everything. But God says that instead of the shame that they feel now, that they're going to receive a double portion. They're going to receive a blessing instead of disgrace. Their everlasting joy is going to be theirs. And, you know, that's amazingly good news, isn't it, for those who feel ashamed and there are many people like that in this world. Maybe that's you this morning. You know, many people who don't feel good enough, who are constantly trying to be more. You know, they're striving to be more than they are because they don't think much of themselves. And the more they do, they never actually attain what they're looking for. Maybe those who've been shamed by others. You know, perhaps their family. Perhaps they've been carrying that shame throughout their whole life. Perhaps those who feel they could never be forgiven for the things that they've done. And, and do you know what? When most people look at, at their darkest thoughts and their worst moments, you know, any of us can find plenty enough to be shameful about, can't we? You know, I, I can find plenty. And, you know, the disappointment of that can be crushing if that's where we dwell. You know, but Isaiah has already said, forget the former things that have taken place. See, I'm doing a new thing. You know, God's not created us to live under a cloud of shame. He's created us to display the image of God, to be a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor, as we looked at in the first week. You know, this is why Jesus came to give us, you know, as we've read at the beginning of Isaiah 61, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garments of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness and despair, beauty for ashes. You know, it's all there. And Jesus himself comes, the anointed one, you know, the, the, the one chosen by God, the Messiah, and he takes all of our sin and our shame upon himself. You know, that's the heart of the gospel. You know, our sin and shame has been nailed to the cross. It's been defeated. It's been destroyed. It's, you know, God remembers it no more. It's been defeated in his death. And Jesus has risen again to new life in order to share his inheritance with us, which is the nations. It's the world. And it's this glorious new life, this double portion, if you like. So what has this got to do with justice? Well, actually, it's got everything to do with justice. The justice of God is most clearly seen in the way that he deals with his people. And it's actually so much better than we ever thought. The justice of God is seen most clearly at the cross. It's the, it's the place that, that we're told in the Psalms and, and in other prophecies where justice and mercy meet. You know, if you want to see the justice of God, look at the cross. His justice is seen, his perfect justice, in the way that he takes our sin upon himself. It's put like this. I heard this. Um, if you've ever done an alpha course, you might have heard this illustration, but it's like a judge. Okay? A judge who presides over the case of a, a, a person whose list of charges is, is prolific. You know, it's longer than your arm. And the judge sees this person in the dock, helpless misguided, scarred by life, without any hope for the future. And he pronounces the sentence and decrees that this man has to pay a fine that would bankrupt him many, many times over, that is far more than anything he has, but that is fitting for the crimes that he has committed. But immediately after the trial, this judge goes round, he goes to the other side, he goes to the man in the dock, and he writes a check for the whole amount 
and more besides, and he hands it to that man. You know, justice has definitely been served. The crimes have been paid for. You know, the charges that have been brought against him, they can never be brought against him again, can they? And this man has been given a whole new fresh start, a whole new life. And God's justice is like this, but it's so much more. It's so much better. It involves freedom for the oppressed, which we read about in the opening verse of this chapter. It involves also judgment for the oppressor if they will not change their ways. You know, God will judge the living and the dead. He will, he will put all things to rights. He will bring an end to evil ultimately. You know, God hates sin, we read in, in um, verse 8. It's often said that God hates sin, but he loves the sinner. And we live in a society that finds it really hard to accept this. You know, people sometimes say, well, in order to love me, you've got to love my views. You've got to love my politics. You've got to love all of my baggage and affirm everything that I do unconditionally. And actually, you know, that's, that's nonsense. That's not love. You know, when it comes to sin even, hate can seem a strong word for us. But God hates sin because of what it does to people. You know, he hates what it does to the human heart. He hates how it can twist things, how it can distort us, how it can really screw us up inside and how our lives can become darkened by the effects of it and how it can dull us to the presence of God who loves us. You know, how it takes us away from him. You know, God hates this. You know, he, he hates what it causes us to do to others. He hates pride and, and injustice. And if he didn't hate all this, then he wouldn't be truly good and loving. God hates sin so much that he couldn't stand at a distance and just watch how it wreaks havoc in the world. But he stepped in. You know, he loved the world so much that he sent his one and only son. That whoever believes in him will not perish. You know, will not drown in their sin, will not spiral into destruction, but will have everlasting life with him. Will be set free and renewed by Jesus as we see in this passage in Isaiah. Isaiah then, he goes on. And he says in the second half of verse 8 that the justice of God is seen in the way that he blesses his people. You know, it's seen in his faithfulness to his covenant with them. A covenant is um, not a term we use much today, but it's a special relationship, a committed relationship. So the example we're all familiar with today is a marriage where commitments are made to one another that are not meant to be broken. But... The covenant that God made with the Jewish people through Abraham was quite unique. Um, we said this before, but in, in the days of Abraham, so we're going right back really, we're going thousands of years back in, in history. Um, if two tribes wanted to make a, a covenant, an agreement, a contract, normally it would be like a peace treaty. So it would be saying, well, we won't attack you if you don't attack us, essentially. What they'd do is they'd seal this covenant with a ritual. So rather than get out and sign a contract, because that wasn't um, practical in those days, they do something quite grotesque. They take an animal, they cut it in half, they'd lay these two halves opposite one another, and then both sides would walk through the middle. And what they'd be saying is, if I break this promise, may I become like this animal? May I essentially be torn in two? Um, uh, and as I say, it's, it's quite a grotesque picture for us today. Uh, sorry if you've got a weak constitution, but um, this is what they do. But God made a covenant with Abraham and God told Abraham, it's in Genesis 15. He says, go and get a heifer, a goat and a ram and cut them in half. And, and as we said, arrange these pieces opposite each other. And so Abraham did this. And then an extraordinary thing happened. A, a smoking fire pot and a blazing torch appeared and passed through the middle of this. You know, this is what Abraham saw. And this represented the fact that God was passing between them and, and he was making this covenant. But Abraham didn't. He didn't go through. You know, God made Abraham so many promises concerning him and his people. But God was the one who was going to ensure this covenant was kept. All he asked was that Abraham trusted in him. God was the one who took responsibility, if you like. If this covenant was broken, God was going to be the one who was going to restore it. And ultimately, the price of the unfaithfulness of the people of God was going to be paid by God himself. 
was going to be paid through Jesus. His blood was going to be shed so that their sins and their unfaithfulness could be forgiven. Do you understand? You know, God was so determined to bless his people that he was going to be the one um, to, 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 to essentially ensure that these promises could be kept. And so Isaiah declares this in verse 10. Isaiah says, unsurprisingly, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. You know, God is so good, isn't he? For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, as a bride adorns herself with jewels. You know, what an amazing image. Isaiah knows the grace of God. You know, Isaiah has experienced the grace of God. He lives in the grace of God. He knows God is good and delights in him. You know, we're going to be singing about that later on. You know, Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desire of your heart. You know, what are you delighting in today? You know, have you realized how good God has been to you? You know, are you, are you sometimes um, just tempted to focus on the things that aren't good, that don't seem fair in life? Or, or are you delighting yourself in God? You know, we face heartbreaking tragedies in life that the Bible never minimizes for a second. God never minimizes those in, you know, for a, for a second. You know, God's people had been in slavery for decades when Isaiah wrote to them. Their home had been destroyed and yet Isaiah said, I delight in the Lord. Abraham was told when this covenant was made with him that his descendants would face 400 years of slavery in Egypt. But he delighted and trusted in the Lord. What are you facing right now? And will you decide to delight yourself in God because he will have his way. He will put back together the broken pieces of your life and will make something beautiful. And when he's done, he'll put the whole world to right. But you know, praise God that he decides to start with us and that he chooses us to be a part of this new creation. Praise God that he doesn't sweep pain and tragedy under the carpet, but instead he rebuilds and restores and renews and makes something beautiful even out of the ashes. You know, maybe you've experienced that in your life. Isaiah has experienced this grace of God that's described at the beginning of Isaiah 61. Verse 3 speaks of him receiving garments of praise instead of a spirit of despair. You know, and, and Isaiah here, let's get the verses up again. He speaks about being clothed in garments of salvation and arrayed in a robe of his righteousness. You know, this makes me think of the parable of the prodigal son. You know, I said we were going to mention it. You know, and as we mentioned earlier, the, the children are looking at this today. So maybe you can have a conversation. If you've got children and they're doing that, you can talk about this with them and see what they think and see what they've learned. Um, but the parable of the prodigal son, Luke 15, it, it tells us of a son who returns home having squandered his inheritance, having insulted his father and having become destitute. You know, he's ended up helping out on a pig farm, which in Jewish culture was just not the done thing. And he comes to his senses and he returns home. And it tells us how the father is watching out for him and how he runs towards him and he embraces him in spite of everything. He kisses him regardless of the state in which the son is in. And he calls for his best robe to be taken and given and clothed his son with this best robe. You know, and Jesus has given us not just any old royal robes. He's given us his robes, his garments to wear. This is what Isaiah is saying. He's taken our rags away and given us these royal robes and fitted us out to eat at his father's table. You know, this is, it's obviously a metaphor, but it is a description of a personal renewal and revival and um, and what God can do to transform our lives. Isaiah has experienced this. Have you experienced it? Do you know Jesus? Do you you know what he can do in your life? Do you delight in the Lord? You know, what clothes are you wearing this morning as you listen to this? Are you you wearing clothes of shame or are you wearing clothes of honour? 
But it's not just about us. You know, Isaiah does not stop there. Isaiah knows what he's experienced is for the whole world. And he doesn't know exactly how God is going to do it. Let's just remember that for a second. He, has, he probably has very little idea how on earth God's going to achieve this. But he knows it's absolutely assured. He knows God is going to bless the nations just as he's promised. God is going to put the world to right. And it's a cast iron certainty. He says, just as the soil makes a sprout come up, just as a garden causes seeds to grow. You know, if you want to see a miracle... If you want to see a miracle, just look at how um, just look at how a seed manages to push through against all the odds. Just look at how a tiny seed can push through soil that is many hundreds, if not thousands, of times its own weight. Look at how a seed will bring life about when the odds are heavily stacked against it, and and the abundant life that can come from one tiny seed. You know there is God-given potential inside a seed that's pretty much unstoppable. You know, especially when the conditions are as favourable as the ones that Isaiah is describing here. For Isaiah, basically, it's not a question of if God's going to do this. It's, it's a question of when. The sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up from all nations. That's what he's going to do. You know, this is written hundreds of years before Jesus came. It's written to a people who are broken hearted by their own exile from their land and the destruction of their home. It's written to a people who are meant to be the light to all the nations themselves, and whose ruined city, Jerusalem, was supposed to be the joy of the whole earth. It's written to a people who are experiencing the oppression of an evil empire, and they're knowing that there's, there's many other empires that are just like this, and, and they're going to face them in the coming centuries. It's written to a people who are surrounded by pagan nations whose practices and societies were so far from righteous, you wouldn't even believe some of the things that they did. It was deeply disturbing in so many ways. So what an enormous faith Isaiah had in the promises of God to be able to say the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up from all nations. You know, even when in Isaiah's day, we could say it looked like there was no hope You know, we all face times, don't we, when it feels like we've run through the reserve tank of hope that we've got and and disappointment after disappointment leave us feeling pretty much empty. And that is where, like Isaiah, we need to know this prophetic stirring in our spirit to know that it's precisely out of these kind of situations that God does his very best work. You know, he specialises in bringing life out of death. You know, that's what happens with a seed, isn't it? You know, Jesus said this, he said, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. You know, the sovereign law will make righteousness and praise spring up from all nations as these seeds are scattered across the face of the earth. This is the power of resurrection. You know, and sometimes in order for God to do something new in us, A death has to take place, metaphorically speaking. You know, I think we're seeing this in this time of of COVID. Many Christians and and indeed the whole church is kind of going through a process of transformation. It might be a painful one, but God is doing something in his people. He's stirring something in us and he's stirring something in our communities. And Isaiah knows that when he looks out at this tragedy, as he looks out at the rubble of Jerusalem, What he sees is rebuilding and renewal. And he sees God's glory even reaching the nations, even out of this personal tragedy. You know, I don't know if we have those eyes of hope, but I pray that we do. And and the point is that what Isaiah prophesies has and is being fulfilled. What What he prophesies here, it's over here on this side of the screen, isn't it? You know, the sovereign Lord, Jesus Christ, has made righteousness and praise spring up from all nations through his death, and his resurrection and ascension. You know, today there are disciples in, in many hundreds of nations who are following Jesus. And there are more people coming to faith in Jesus now than there's ever been before in the history of the world or in the last 2000 years. You know, there's revivals that are springing up all over the world. We, we're in a time of global revival when you look at the worldwide church. Because this resurrection life is unstoppable. 
It's like a seed sprouting up. It pushes through even the hardest of ground at times. And it's pushing through in Ashford. You know, it's springing up in our community. You know, I think the soil's been prepared in prayer. It's been softened by the love, the amazing love that's been shown by so many churches over so long. And it's been watered by the Holy Spirit who is moving powerfully at this time in ways we don't even know about. And you know, the seed's already in the ground and it's ready to spring up and break through. It's already in the ground. And what, what does that mean practically for us? Well, it, it means if you haven't given your life to Jesus, now's the time. You know, today is the day of salvation. There's no time like the present. In fact, maybe there'll never be a time like the present again. But right now, you can welcome him into your life and see this transforming power and no righteousness and praise springing up in your life. It means for the church, we've, we need to continue to grow in prayer, corporately and privately. You know, this is, this is something that the sovereign Lord does. Yes, we're part of it, but we rely totally on him. You know, we need to fast and pray where we can. We've got to get serious about prayer. It also means, as we've experienced and, and looked at in the past couple of weeks, we need to ask God for a fresh anointing of his Holy Spirit. This Isaiah 61 anointing, this anointing that's Christ's anointing. You know, as we said, if you're in Christ, you can't miss the anointing because Jesus is drenched in it. So if you're in him, it's going to hit you. Okay, and we need this renewing, reviving power to be at work in us. You know, it means we need to experience his goodness and grace afresh in a dynamic and a personal way in our own lives as well. Because actually, it's got to be all about him. You know, he's the one our hearts desire, isn't he? He's the one we want after all. You know, I, I, I want to see God do incredible things in our community. But actually also, I want him to do it in me. You know, I don't want to miss out on that. You know, don't settle for anything less. Don't settle for religion instead of relationship. And it means, I think we've got to be really ready, prepared to give a reason for the hope that we have. Where we've become rusty at this, we need to get back into gear with regards to to sharing about Jesus because people are going to be asking. You know, there's been conversations already down at the well about Jesus. You know, that's inevitable. That's going to happen. We're praying for it. And there's going to be so many more. You know, so unless you want to have a conversation about Jesus, if you're a Christian, I recommend you stay away from the well, actually, you know, because it's going to happen, you know, but actually more so get ready for it. Okay, be prepared for it and be ready to pray for people. You know, people, if they say they're unwell, if they say they're having a bad day, don't don't just sympathize with them. Don't just say, poor you or some words of consolation because we have a God who can heal and we have a God who cares about it and invite him into the situation by praying for them because if we just ignore that we're not being as loving as we could be I think we've got to expect that where we've had loved ones who've been really resistant to the gospel you know maybe even dismissive um, they may be the very ones in whom God will move in this season you know I think of that picture of a seed pushing up through a crack in the tarmac. You know, God can, God can cause miracles to erupt in, in the most unlikely places. You know, where you've tried before and you failed, don't just think, well, I've, I've been there and done that. You've got to be willing to try again because now's a different time. And that might mean for you, you need to experience healing from disappointments. It might mean that you have to pray. In fact, you will have to pray for God to fan back into flame the gifts he's placed in you. As a whole church, we're going to continue to bless our community and connect with them at the well that we mentioned. We're going to be launching a series on big questions over the the summer that's designed to help answer some of the questions that non-Christians and even Christians are asking at this time and help us to know how to answer these questions when they come up. And we're going to be launching an online alpha in September too. So there's so many opportunities. There's so much to come. But in the meantime, let's pray that God would pour out a fresh anointing on his church. You know, let's pray that he'll meet people even today who are connecting in with this live stream for the first time and cause righteousness and praise to spring up in Ashford, to spring up in Kent, to spring up in our nation and our corner of Europe and transform the landscape. You know, let's pray there'll be a harvest in this season that will have impacts for decades to come. So yeah, join me in prayer. Let's just, let's just invite the Holy Spirit just to move in us right now. 
you might want to put your hands out in front of you. Um, but just, um, yeah, Holy Spirit, we ask you to come. We ask you to move in every heart and every home right now. We ask you to move here in us uh, and Lord, now brothers and sisters who are watching this. And God, move in the hearts of those who've not yet given their lives to you. Lord, let them know your goodness and grace right now. We open ourselves to you. We want to meet with you above everything else. You know, and I think, you know, there might be people here who want to give their lives to Jesus. And now you can just say to him, you can pray to him. You can say, Jesus, come into my life. You know, God will do the rest. You know, he will work his plan for your life out. If you are willing to submit to him, if you're willing to turn from sin and ask for forgiveness and accept the new life he wants to give to you and commit yourself to following Jesus. Jesus, we give our lives to you today. Jesus, we ask for forgiveness for our sins. Jesus, we want to follow you. Lord, we want to do your will in our lives and see your glory in the earth. And then you might want to pray just for your, your first love to be renewed. You know, that love you had at first with God, that experience of him and his goodness and grace. You know, I think there'll be people here today who are longing to experience that afresh. And, um, you know, that's, yeah, that's something, just pray to God for that. Or maybe you need that fire of God, that passion for the gospel that uh, might have just smoldered a bit. You know, God says, you know, a bruised wick he will not break and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out because he's so good and gracious. Yeah, and you might just want to increase in that anointing. Do you know, the, the Zoom prayer room is going to be open. We saw them waving on the, the screen earlier. Um, you know, they are there. There are people waiting to pray for you. Paul is there. Who you might have seen in previous weeks. If you haven't used that before, take that brave step today. You know, if you feel God's prompting you, the link is, um, is there in the, in the comments. So you can, you can click on that. And, um, and do be patient. It might take them a while just to get you in and to get you paired up with someone. So you can just wait um, for a little while if you're willing to do that. But um, there are people who want to stand with you in prayer. But we're going to have a time now of, of responding to God too and responding to him in worship. And, and Shona is going to lead us. So over to you, Shona. As Mark was saying, like the prayer, the prayer room is now open. Um, so we've got three songs now to respond and reflect on what Mark said and, and listen to what God's saying. And I really feel that if you're feeling weary or if you feel the Holy Spirit is moving in you or you want to know more about Jesus or if you just want to praise him, do head over to that prayer room. There are people there for you to pray with you, to praise with you, to worship with you. Whatever you need, they are there for you. And if you want something more confidential, you want to text the number and Mark and Izzy will pray for you. Um, you don't need to put your name on that as well. So feel free to get in contact in these next three songs and we will continue to share God's work, word through this time. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing the goodness of God I love you, Lord See never fails me all my days. 
of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. God is just so good. He looks after us through it all. He is by our side through it all. And he's just so such an incredible, mighty God. Um, but he cares about every single one of us. And that's just so incredible. You give life.
we've had this, um, this message in, just this little testimony um, from Alistair. It says, morning, about 20 years ago, I was a non-believer and an alcoholic. Since then, I've had several life-threatening operations. Each time, God has pulled me through. Perfect examples of God's love. That is God at work. Just give yourself to God. Um, Amen. That's from Alistair. And, you know, we've had so much today about going through the fire, that Isaiah 43 image, you know, and um, just give yourself to him in those times and see what God can do. He will pull you through. Yeah. We've got um, one last song to sort of round today off, and this is all about how holy God is. And um, again, I'm going to just mention the prayer room because um, when we're at church, normally we have the prayer team right at the front and, and you know, you can go down and you can see them. But take that step and go and um, click on that link and go into the Zoom room and ask for prayer if you need it. Just open yourself up to God. I really feel there are some people out there that really need to do that today. So if that's you, head over to that prayer room and open yourself up to those people. It's completely confidential. They won't go and tell anyone if you don't want them to. Um, just They will just be there to pray with you.
Yes, Lord, we adore you. You're the one who our hearts desire. Um, Lord, you're the one who we want to delight ourselves in. And Lord God, thank you. We've delighted in your presence this morning with us. We will delight in your presence in our homes through this day and in our lives through this week. And Jesus, we pray that you would... Just anoint us with your spirit, Lord. Anoint us with an ability to know and be aware of your presence with us wherever we go, Lord. Whatever season we're in at the moment, Lord, whether we're going through the fire and the flood or whether we're on the mountaintop, God, we want to know you and glorify you in our lives. Amen. Well, um, just a reminder, you can still keep in contact with us. You can still text us on the number if you want to. And the Zoom prayer room is still open. So there's still an opportunity to connect in there for prayer via the link. And um, Please do do that. If, if God has been moving in your heart this morning and stirring in you and you've been thinking the whole way through, I know I should, I know I should. Now's the time. Just click on it and, um, and go for it. Um, also, the well will be open this week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday mornings. We'll keep giving it a plug. Um, Roger. Whiteley has said, if you can volunteer, let the office know. So you can email us um, on the office email, which is office at Baptist.church, but maybe find the website or find the Facebook page and you'll get there one route or another. Um, all that's left to be said is do keep connecting in. Um, you can find out about other things happening in the week on our Facebook page. Um, you can find out, uh, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel in the link, which is probably down here somewhere if you're watching on YouTube. Um, but thank you so much for joining us this morning for worship. We pray the Lord would bless you and keep you, mm-hmm. and make his fi- face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Um, we're going to play out um, once more with with our welcome video and we'll see you next time. Welcome to church. 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 Welcome to church.